participating in a nutshell, but also co-author of the Metastock Program in the State of Rosemary. So he's uh, obviously a very important asset to uh, ASR in our uh, technical team. Uh, and without further ado, I'd like to introduce Stuart McPhee. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to uh, get an idea of who's here. Can you please raise your hand if you like money? Okay. Can you please raise your hand if you trade or invest in the market to make money? Who's had less than 12 months of experience in the market? Say one to five years and then beyond five years. Okay, thank you. I ask who likes money because I think it's very important we identify our primary motivation to trade or invest in the market. Let's be honest, we're only human. Our primary motivation often comes down to wanting to make money. Now surely there's other motivations, there's secondary motivations and aspirations we may have by like things like going on holiday more often or spending more time with my children or um, perhaps you know, giving up work. But you cannot deny it all comes back to that undeniable urge to make money. And here's the frustrating bit about all of this. I believe that most of us trade to make money. However, because we focus so much on making money, that often causes us to become unstuck and make very, very poor trading choices on a regular basis. Let me just say that again. It's us focusing on making money so much that often has us making very, very poor trading choices on a regular basis. And that's why so many people end up actually losing money. And that to me is the great irony in trading. And that's unfortunate. It's a bit annoying, but that's the way it is. Ladies and gentlemen, my time is very limited this morning. Very, very limited. So I'd like to just give you my, some of my very best information. Some critical information that you can take away and begin to implement, if not perhaps this weekend, but maybe certainly within the week, okay? Because my time is limited this morning. <coughs> this is what I'd like to talk about today. I'd just like to, uh, I guess, provide a very basic overview of some of the trading products that you can trade. I'd like to lay the foundations as I see them to trading success. I'd like to talk about the idea of putting a plan together and I really want to emphasize the need um, the essential nature of having a trading plan to guide you to success. I'd like to talk a little bit about our approach and the way we look at the market and the way we analyse potential trading opportunities. And then uh, never one of my uh, presentations would be complete without finishing up with the time-tested trading rules. The rules that have stood the test of time. So that's how I'd like to finish up with you this morning. <coughs> I think it's important to realise that, uh, look, a lot of us know about shares or stocks or, you know, BHP, but I think it's important to realise that there are so many different trading vehicles or products available for us to trade. And all those other products beyond shares or stocks or equities provide different advantages. And I think it's important that we recognise that. I don't know about you, but the way I've seen the market over the last six months, it's, it's had some issues and it's uh, provided some very challenging times. Yet, I, I'm amazed how many people don't know that you can make money when prices fall. And if you only take one thing away from this morning's presentation, I'd like it to be that. I'll say that again. Prices can fall, yet you can make money. And I'm amazed how many people don't know that. So when I talk about these uh, various trading products, Listen out for when I say you can go and make money when prices <coughs> fall. I don't think there'd be anyone in the room who's not familiar with shares or stocks. You know, when you bought Telstra shares or you bought BHP, you're in fact buying shares. Um, shares predominantly, we're looking for the price to rise. If it rise, we're doing okay. But there are so many other different products and a lot of these are under the bracket of derivatives or derivative products. The name is because they derive their price from something else. And that something else is often a share price, or the value of an index, or the value of a commodity. So we have options. Options have been around for a very, very long time, and they provide us leverage. Now what leverage in the market allows us to do is, even though we may only have $5,000 committed, 
to an individual trade, our exposure may be something like $50,000. Okay, so that's something that uh, options allow us to do. Warrants are very similar, they, they provide us that leverage. Foreign exchange or currencies. If you had asked anybody 10 years ago who's traded a foreign exchange, not just going overseas and swapping $100 for something, but actually traded a currency pair, if you had asked people 10 years ago, you would have very few responses. May I ask now, who has actually traded foreign exchange in this room? Anybody? Okay, so there's about 10, which is encouraging. If I'd asked the same question 10 years ago, there wouldn't have been one. So a lot more people are now turning to foreign exchange or currencies. So buying the Australian dollar against the US dollar, for example. Now, of course, foreign exchange, like a lot of the other derivative products, provide us leverage. We may only have $1,000 committed to the trade, but we may be exposed to something like $100,000 worth of a trade. So incredible leverage. Finally, uh, futures and then contracts for difference. Again, contracts for difference, or CFDs as they're commonly known as, have taken Australia by storm. I think they entered the Australian market back in maybe in 2002-01 with a couple of providers of CFDs. Now there's numerous and now we have so many people trading contracts for difference. CFDs. Now all of the products below shares and stocks have one interesting characteristic and that is they allow us to trade in either direction. Allow us to trade in either direction so when prices fall we can actually make money. Okay, so that provides us tremendous flexibility. And over the last six months a lot of people certainly in mainstream media saying how terrible the market's performing and the like and that's fair enough because it has been but I know of people in the last six months who have done exceptionally well, simply because they've been trading the other direction. Okay? Now, what are some of the considerations you may work your way through to determine what product is right for you? Okay, and I've just come up with a very, very basic list. One of the first things we really should do whenever we're talking about putting money in the market is clearly to lay out our objectives. What are we trying to achieve with putting this money in the market. I had a boss uh, in the American Army who always used to say, if you aim at nothing, you're sure to hit. So what are you working towards and what are your goals and objectives within the market? Because that will certainly have some impact on what product you select to trade because all of those products previously all have different risk profiles. They all have completely different potential rewards. Okay, because of the leverage nature of them and like. Clearly risk some of you are just simply not going to be comfortable trading foreign exchange. That's just because they are an incredibly risky product. I mean, obviously, those who trade it well manage that risk, and that's very, um, it's very important that you do that. But some people in the audience may just never <coughs> trade foreign exchange simply because they're just incredibly risky, high risk. So every one of us in this room, and there's a lot of us here, for a variety of factors, we all have a different tolerance to risk. We really can't do a lot about it because it's buried somewhere deep down in here. So when we measure our tolerance level with risk, that can have some impact on what product we elect to trade. And then finally, as I alluded to, which I think is critical considering the way the market has performed over the last six months, and we'll continue to do so for however long, and then in seven years' time again, it'll go through a bit of a bad stretch as well, is the direction, the ability to trade in either direction. Provides you tremendous flexibility. Okay, and all those products below the shares allow you to do that. And if I just talk about shares as well, uh, not a very common strategy these days, you can actually short sell shares as well. Okay, so not even using a derivative product, but that involves margin and it's not uh, one for one, so to speak. So there's a lot of different products out there. Now let me just get your head around the idea of trading and making money when the price falls because that's a real mental shift if we've never been exposed to that before. Because we are so in tune of thinking about buying uh, Telstra shares at $4 and selling them at $6 and making some money. We well, can sell Telstra shares at 5 buy them back at 4 and guess what? Make money.